I ever wondered why pressure transmitter calibration is such a crucial process in any engineering field? Well, let's dive into it. Pressure transmitter calibration is the cornerstone of accurate measurements. It's like the compass for a ship. Without it, you're lost at sea. A transmitter functions as the brain of any system translating pressure into an electrical signal. Now imagine if that brain is misinformed. The outcome, quite simply, could be disastrous. A poorly calibrated transmitter can lead to erroneous readings, affecting the overall performance and safety of a system. Think about it this way. If your car's speedometer showed you were driving at 30 miles per hour, when you were actually cruising at 50, that's a recipe for disaster, right? The same principle applies to pressure transmitters in any engineering setup. So, it's clear that pressure transmitter calibration isn't just a routine procedure, it's a necessity for smooth and safe operations. Now, before we start the calibration process, let's make sure we have all the necessary tools and safety measures in place. First and foremost, we need the right tools. A heart communicator, for instance, is an essential device used to calibrate and configure process transmitters. It's the key to unlocking your transmitter's full potential. Another critical tool is the pressure calibrator, which allows us to apply precise pressure levels to the transmitter. Additionally, we need the proper instrument fitting, such as a quarter-inch NPT fitting, to ensure a secure and leak-free connection between our tools and the transmitter. Now let's talk about safety. Safety should always be the first priority in any engineering task, and calibrating pressure transmitters is no different. Before we start, we need to isolate the main process isolation valve. This step ensures that the process fluid is blocked off from the transmitter, preventing any accidental release of potentially hazardous materials. Next, we have to depressurize the pressure transmitter. This step is accomplished by opening the vent valve, which allows any built-up pressure inside the transmitter to safely escape. It's a crucial step to avoid any unexpected pressure release when we connect our calibration tools. One more thing to remember is to isolate the manifold valve and open the vent plug. This action further ensures that the transmitter is completely depressurized and safe to work on. With the right tools and safety measures, we are now ready to start the actual calibration process. Now, it's time to dive into the nitty-gritty of the calibration process. To start the calibration, we first apply pressure following the range provided in the transmitter or as indicated by the heart communicator. This pressure application is crucial as it allows us to gauge the accuracy of the transmitter's readings. It's essentially like setting a benchmark for the transmitter to follow. The next step is to check the transmitter reading at various pressure levels. We typically do this by applying pressure for 25%, 50%, 75% and the full span range. This is a systematic way to assess the transmitter's performance across its entire operational range. It's like testing a car at different speeds to see how it performs. If we discover that the transmitter needs calibration, we use the heart communicator. This device is a handy tool that allows us to interact with the transmitter and make necessary adjustments. Think of it as a remote control that you use to fine-tune your television settings. One of the key adjustments we can make using the heart communicator is the zero and span trims. These are crucial settings that affect the transmitter's performance. Zero trim is like setting the baseline or the starting point for the transmitter. On the other hand, span trim adjusts the range or the extent of the measurements that the transmitter can handle. After we've made all the necessary adjustments and are confident about the transmitter's calibration, we then disconnect the pressure calibrator from the transmitter. This is a crucial step to ensure that no residual pressure remains within the transmitter. It's like ensuring that all the doors and windows are shut after an air conditioning unit is installed. Once the pressure calibrator is removed, we flush the line to ensure that no hydraulic oil or water is left inside the transmitter. This is akin to cleaning up after a job well done. It's important to keep the transmitter clean to ensure its optimal performance. We then close the vent plug, isolate the vent valve and open the main isolation valve. 
we do this slowly to avoid any sudden pressure changes that could potentially harm the transmitter's delicate diaphragm. It's like slowly releasing the brakes on a car to avoid a sudden jolt. Once the calibration is complete, we check the transmitter's readings to ensure they are displaying correctly. This is the final quality check. Just like checking your work after completing a task, it's important to confirm that everything is working as it should. And that's how you calibrate a pressure transmitter. But we are not done yet. After calibration, there are a few more steps to ensure everything is in order. First off, it's crucial to remove the pressure calibrator from the transmitter. This might seem like a minor step, but it's essential for the integrity of the system. Once that's done, don't forget to flush the line. You want to make sure there's no residual hydraulic oil or water left inside the transmitter. It's all about making sure your equipment is clean and ready for use. Next up, close the vent plug. This small act can prevent unwanted air or contaminants from entering the system. Isolate the vent valve and open the main isolation valve. Be careful here. Opening the valve too quickly can cause sudden pressure changes that might damage the transmitter diaphragm. The key is to do it slowly and steadily. Now, it's time for the final check. Open the manifold isolation valve slowly to avoid any potential damage. Once it's open, make sure the transmitter reading is showing properly. This is your confirmation that the calibration was successful. The final steps involve documentation. Enter the reading in the calibration report format. This report will serve as a record of the calibration process and its results. Don't forget to check the reading in DCS as well. This step cross-verifies the reading and ensures consistency and accuracy across all systems. And with that, we've successfully calibrated a pressure transmitter. Remember, regular calibration is key to accurate readings and efficient operations. Let's quickly recap the key points of the calibration process. First, we isolate and depressurize the pressure transmitter, then connect the calibrator fitting. We then apply pressure according to the transmitter range, checking readings at various pressure points. If needed, we use the heart communicator for calibration and zero and span trims. After calibration, we remove the calibrator, flush the line and reinstate the valves. Finally, we ensure the transmitter is reading correctly and document the readings and that wraps up our guide on pressure transmitter calibration. Keep these steps in mind and you'll ensure accurate readings and efficient operations every time.